Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about Nightmare Alley. The possible messages we are able to interpret from this film are hinted at by the many symbols and abstract scenes in the film. Enjoying and understanding the film however does not rely on us to be able to decipher its hidden meanings as the film's plot makes sense on many levels. The opening scene is a very symbolic insight into Stan's mind. He burns down his house with his father's body. He is trying to escape his past which the house represents, without dealing with the psychological impact it has had on him. Trying to forget the past when he hasn't fully come to terms with it cannot have good consequences. As the film will show, suppressing these strong emotions will make them come out subconsciously until they begin to take control of Stan's life. After burning the house, Stan gets on a bus and we see him looking at the watch he's wearing. The watch is a very significant symbol. It represents Stan's hate and feeling of abandonment within himself. We know this because both the watch and these emotions originate from his father and also just like these emotions that Stan tries to repress, the watch is something he has with him at all times. The watch is also a symbol of time and therefore it acts as a reminder that you can't run from your past and that you have to confront it because sooner or later it will catch up to you. And this theme of a destiny that is chasing Stan is something referenced continuously throughout the film. Very early on in the film, we are introduced to the idea of Stan taking out his repressed emotions on people he subconsciously sees his father in when he nearly beats the geek to death. The feeling of hate seems to be the more prominent one, however Stan also seems to have strong feelings of abandonment. Stan befriends an older couple, Pete and Zena. Pete is an alcoholic who only cares about where his next drink is going to come from and doesn't think much of leaving his wife at home alone with another man. Pete resembles Stan's dad in his alcoholism and also in his disregard for his wife, but also becomes a mentor to Stan when he begins to teach him his tricks. We learn a lot about Stan when Pete and Zena perform their mind reading act on him, and during this act Stan offers his watch. This is a reference to a line Pete later on says in the film, when he says, People are desperate to tell you who they are, desperate to be seen. This is because the watch represents a very big and fundamental part of who Stan is and by offering his watch, Stan is looking for answers to his problems and his past. Although Pete seems to be happy to take Stan under his wing and is a good mentor to him, ultimately Stan subconsciously sees his father in Pete and Stan has a lot of inner hatred towards his father. Poisoning Pete is Stan repeating his past and it is something he is destined to repeat again until he lets go of the negative emotions he has instead of burying them deep within himself. Another one of the main symbols in the film is the free-eyed baby Enoch. Stan is clearly intrigued by him. He sympathises with him because they both lost their mothers and Enoch becomes an inspiration to Stan as we later on see him wearing an eye patch with a third eye during his act. However, to the audience, Enoch represents something else. Enoch was a character in the Bible who was said to be a recipient of a secret knowledge from God, and Enoch's third eye is a reference to an all-seeing power or a God. Therefore, Enoch acts as a reminder of a knowledge or a truth that cannot be avoided or ignored. Stan's relationship with his father is something he is trying to avoid, and Enoch acts as a reminder that this is something he can't avoid forever, as it will catch up to him eventually. This fate which is chasing Stan is something he is aware of to some extent. Dreams are a manifestation of our subconscious and Stan later on in the film dreams of himself with fire surrounding him. This dream is like a prophecy. The fire represents the emotions he has been trying to repress and they are burning and destroying everything around him. In the second half of the film we meet Lilith. She is a very interesting character because she is very hard to read and her actions and motives are not very clear throughout the film. After Stan manages to outsmart her during his act and even provoke some emotions in her when talking about her mother, Lilith begins to feel an attraction to Stan. He intrigues her and she wants to see Stan again. That's why she hands him her business card. She feels herself opening up to the possibility of love. However, Stan only sees Lilith as a potential business partner and he tells her this when they first meet. Lilith is not interested in money and she tells him she just wants the truth. What she means by this is she wants to know how Stan was able to provoke such strong emotions in her and she wants to know if there is more to him. During their first therapy session we see Stan standing over Lilith. This symbolises that at this point 
he has the upper hand as Lilith feels an attraction to him and she doesn't quite yet understand his intentions. However, just one session with Stan is enough for her to see him for who he is and for, his, for the attraction to fade. And she tells him she got what she wanted when he returns. When she sees Stan plans to hide his money in her safe, she begins to formulate a plan to teach Stan a lesson. During their next therapy session, we see Lilith standing over Stan. This is because she now has the upper hand. She pretends to still be attracted to him in order to teach him a lesson by taking his money and by getting him to drink alcohol because she believes he is a weak man and once he has a taste, he won't be able to stop. Whereas Stan complies and fakes the mutual attraction in order to keep Lilith on his side. He is so desperate to keep his scheme going, he overlooks and underestimates her motives and ability. He is so desperate to do the spoof act that he continues to ignore all warning signs, including Xena telling him not to do it, as it is in his destiny for it to go wrong. Stan ignores this because for Stan to change his destiny, Stan needs to change who he is, and Stan is someone with a lot of repressed emotions, something he does not want to acknowledge, and therefore these emotions are controlling him subconsciously. The spoof act is a cruel thing to do, but it also makes Stan feel needed and wanted. Stan represses a lot of feelings of abandonment, as Lilith later on points out, and being wanted and needed by Ezra and Judge Kimball make him feel better. This is why he's very persistent in wanting to do it, because this is a manifestation of that feeling of abandonment. One of my favourite scenes in the film is when Stan goes to Lilith to collect his money. Before attempting to leave, Stan kisses Lilith. However, the kiss is emotionless on her behalf. She does this on purpose to show she has been faking her feelings. However, Stan doesn't get the hint. And as he is about to leave, Lilith says, I do love you, Stan. Lilith purposely overemphasizes, and at this moment, Stan realizes that Lilith has been faking her love for him this whole time, and he freezes. Lilith then lets Stan know she has figured him out, and highlights his peculiar relationship with older men, which, as we highlighted, centers around feelings of hate and abandonment. She then begins to tell him that he is a small man who thinks he is above the common person, and calls him a disappointment. She calls Stan a disappointment because she felt an attraction to him after their initial meeting. However, after their therapy sessions, she discovered his true self. Their therapy sessions have told her everything she needs to know about Stan, and by taking the money, she is teaching him a lesson. She also delivers one of my favourite lines of the film when she says, You don't fool people, people fool themselves. She highlights the fact that Stan is not outsmarting people, but he is preying on their weaknesses and emotions something she was easily able to do to him during their therapy sessions. The final two scenes of the film are symbolically very important. We see Stan as an alcoholic homeless man. The only way Stan could repress and forget the past is through alcohol, and he has now become like his father. He has become what he hates. In this scene, we see Stan give up his watch for some more alcohol. And this is a symbolically very important scene, as it represents Stan finally coming to terms with his past and confronting and letting go of those negative emotions which are represented by the watch. The watch is also Stan's last physical item that he owns and this scene ultimately shows that Stan has had to lose everything he owns in order to finally confront his inner demons and let go of the hatred within himself. The fact that Stan has finally come to terms with his past is something that is confirmed in the next scene and by the last line in the film. In the final scene of the film, Stan goes to a carnival to ask for a job and he is now ready to rebuild his life and correct his mistakes. As he enters a caravan, he sees Enoch on a shelf. Stan has finally let go of the hatred within himself by admitting his wrongdoing to himself and he is now ready to stop running from his past and to accept his fate whatever it may be. Enoch is a representation of that fate. Before Stan can build a new life for himself, Fate deals him a punishment for everything he has done. Stan realises this after drinking the opium-tainted alcohol, and his reaction is to laugh and say, I was born for it. This is because he accepts Fate's punishment of being a geek, because he has admitted his wrongdoing, and he sees the irony in his destiny.